It grabs, it chomps, it thrashes. Here's your look at the Jurassic World Grab and Growl Indoraptor. For the Indoraptor here, push buttons for grabbing and chomping actions, and it also features lights and sounds. As I grab the Ultra Measuretron 5000 to get the Indoraptor measured, I want to shout out a big thank you, big thank you to viewer Bill who took the time and sent this my way. We're going to stop the Ultra Measuretron right there. I think it's closer to being about 16 inches, and yet the Ultra Measuretron tells me it's 15.9, probably just a misstep on my part. Switching that, however, over to centimeters, you're looking at 40.5 centimeters, at least in length here. Let's go ahead and switch that back over. Switch it back over to or to inches. There we go. And we're going to do it to the very top of its head. Now this may provide to be a little bit more difficult, but I push forward nonetheless. And we'll stop it right there. So from the bottom to the very top, the Ultra Measuretron tells us 7.3 inches. That's a lot taller than some most most figures that get released to stores. And switching that then to centimeters, there's a whole lot of numbers happening at the beginning of this review, isn't there? Yes, 18.6 centimeters tall. So how does the Indoraptor stack up for size? Well, we can go ahead and take one of the less than recently released, but less than recently looked at either. Uh, this was the, I believe this was the Pachycephalosaurus. We can put that right next to the Indoraptor. Scale-wise, I guess that's about correct. Pachycephalosaurus was a little bit smaller. This one, by the way, was battle damage. This one was also provided from viewer Bill as well. An interesting also comparison that we can make, making some sounds off in the distance, uh, we can bring in the regular Indoraptor. Now, this is one thing that kind of surprised me. If you put the Indoraptor that we are going to be looking at and the other Indoraptor, this one right here, you'll see that they're not the same size. Scratching my head, perplexed by the whole scenario, I actually thought that the Indoraptors were identical to one another, simply just swapping out, taking out what they didn't really want from one, and then just adding the sound effects and all the moving components to the new one, or slightly new one. Instead, that's not the case at all. No way, Jack. Double check yourself, rub those eyes, they are not, in fact, the same size at all. They're the, uh, the Indoraptor, the newest one that we're going to be looking at, is a lot bigger. Interesting. Very interesting, in fact. Still one of my all-time favorites of the, uh, at least from the Jurassic World lineup. I love the Indoraptor. But, uh, yeah, so there's the comparison between them. If you thought that they were the exact same, I guess, if anything, the lengthwise, lengthwise from here to here, about the same. It's really proportionally, it's the thickness of them that this one has the broader head. This one has, well, the broader body. And uh, if I just hold them up, yeah, there's a better comparison right there. This one dwarfs the previous one that we had a look at. Other than that, it looks like they are identical to one another, at least from a head sculpt standpoint. Maybe that's not 100% true. I go back, I correct what I've said. It looks like the Indoraptor's snout, you can see, is a little bit thicker, a little bit shorter as well as the one that we had looked at before. Certainly this is another one of those times where I had no idea that this guy even existed until Bill had sent this my way. I'm not even sure where he found it, but this is the Indoraptor, a second version of Indoraptor that has the moving components. The head, the torso, and to some extent the tail as well, all sort of work hand in hand. Kind of like friends coming together and building a home. Maybe you and your friends don't come together and don't build a home, but when you and your friends come together and try to get a task completed, you can see it's often better to have more numbers of bodies doing stuff 
Sort of the same thing with Indoraptor. He's made up of components that all sort of work together to give you a pretty cool looking effect. I guess before we get down to the nitty gritty of what exactly it does, we'll just have a quick, quick look, not too long of a look, but a quick look at some of the sculpting that they've put on this one. Now you'll see right away that he doesn't have, yum, 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 doesn't have a mouth that stays shut, unlike the other one. The other one did have the options not only to move the mouth, but the mouth would stay shut as well. I guess if you stick it together, the teeth sort of kind of line themselves up that the mouth stays shut, but it is spring mechanism. There's a spring in there that it's really intended to have the mouth stay open. Sculpting on the eyes is done well, although it does look like they've left a little bit of paint off. So this Indoraptor is blind on this one side and apparently also blind on this side as well. As much as the red that gets sprinkled around the back areas of the eyes, the red in the eyes gets completely left off. Primarily an all black dinosaur, it gets hinted with a few little extra color pops, like for example, the teeth are a very bright cream color. The tongue inside is also done in a, almost like a raspberry. Look at me always describing these colors by food a raspberry sort of colored pink. The sheen overall on the dinosaur, which hopefully the light is capturing and reflecting off, sort of frolicking in the night sky. Uh, you can see it has some nice scaling that they've added to just pretty much right from the, the top, the front of the snout, all the way to the back of the tail. There's no assembly also that was required for this. If you flip it upside down, there's the battery compartment right there. Luckily, batteries are already included, so you don't have to worry about that. There's also a couple of little button mechanisms here, which will trigger the, the moving of the mouth and all the sound effects and stuff like that, which we won't really talk too much about. The color palette kind of reminds me of something like an anaconda, primarily like a really shiny scaled surface. And then you've got these just popping colors of metallic gold and yellow here. It looks fantastic. And that carries over on both sides. Other than that, it's primarily all black, other than just whatever treatment gets afforded to the head. Unfortunately, like claws stay black. I think the claws are black anyways. Feet are nicely posed. There's the uh, QR code. We will examine that a little bit more in a second as well. Scan that with your app, open up a world of discovery, and learning stuff along the way. Yay. So there as a whole is the Indoraptor, a pretty nice looking larger version of the one that we already had a look at. Now we'll bring this one back into the camera. Why not, right? I feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't. This one also benefits again, like I said, we've already looked at that. D dead horse were beaten perhaps, a lot bigger. This one also doesn't have as much the articulation. Well, it does and it doesn't. It does, but a lot of it's controlled by a mechanism. Like it still has the head articulation and the neck articulation and the mouth articulation, but all of that is now sort of being controlled by mechanisms. The neck, for example, is connected to the tail. The torso is also connected to the tail, and yeah, you get the whole idea with the mouth. The articulation on this guy is pretty much about the same, if not identical. Just the only places that you can still manually adjust the Indoraptor is the arms. The arms you can bring out. Let me just hinge those out for you. They kind of hinge out, but they're also a little bit on a spring too. You can bend the elbows, or would you call that still an elbow on a dinosaur? You can bend the arms. How about that? And you can also rotate the, the hands here. The legs move forward and back. You can hinge them out. You can also rotate at the knee area as well as the hind leg right there. The foot also does have, let me just show you here, a little bit of a swivel happening right there. I find this one doesn't balance as well and it could just be because the mouth and the neck area just sit so loosely. They flop around a bit, which seems to off throw his balance. This one, on the contrary, seems to stand a little bit better. But again, it's just a matter of bending it, bending the tail, bending the legs, and bending the arms until you get the desired look. I'll just bring that back a little bit. There we go. And you can see he balances, but he doesn't really quite balance necessarily on his ankles or on flat on his feet. He, 
actually angles a little bit better by having it resting at the back of the ankle. Needless to say, let's have a look at his functions because of course this one is going to have some play value to it as well. Now, I've sort of revealed it a little bit. I revealed how the trick was done at the beginning or about midway through this review. There's two things or really three things that work for this dinosaur. For starters, you got the tail and when you move the tail, directly linked is the torso as well as the arm or as well as the neck area here. So when you hinge this back and forth, you're also rotating or hinging this back and forth as well. See what I mean? You can rotate this, rotating the tail that is, and it again leads then plays into the fact that it's lashing, it's thrashing. And if you had like a dinosaur, a small enough dinosaur in Indoraptor's mouth, you could have him lashing and thrashing around with a dinosaur in tow. Uh, so it does have the rotation, as you can see. It hinges back and forth, which also controls that mechanism. Now, if you look at, there's a button right underneath there. I've already pressed it. When you press the button, there you go. That's where the eyes come into the coloring. I wanted to wait to reveal the fact of why he is specifically blind. Unfortunately though, the light up functions only work when you turn on, when you press the button right here. Other than that, the eyes remain pitch black for the majority of the time that you have them on display. It's sort of unfortunate the trade-off because the only way you're really going to get the red eyes happening again is by pressing, pressing the button, which is right, it's almost concealed, it's, it's right there. Press the button again. There we go. Something also to note as well, whether you're holding the button or you just press the button, it will cycle through the audio the exact same way. So if I just press the button, or if I hold the button, I just, just pressed it quickly there. It does the exact same audio and the lights on the eyes light up the exact same way. So there's two functions. I guess we've looked at the grabbing, the grabbing with the jaw, right? We've looked at the lashing, slashing action with that of the tail. And then there's a third button right here, which is actually more like a lever button that you're pulling back. You're not pressing it down, instead you're pulling it back. And when you pull that back, it brings the hands together, which also gives you extra audio and also lights up the eyes. If you collectively put all of that together, you can sort of do a lashing attack. And everything is sort of at hands distance or finger distance. So you can lash around You can also do this. Which is pretty cool. The only thing that's the problem with this is I do find when I was pulling this trigger button back, right here, when you let go of it, your finger, let me show you here, your finger tends to get stuck right in there in between that button and the button in the area where the button ends up settling. It's a small problem, but I did notice it does catch my thumb in the process of it. So if you are a younger collector of the dinosaur toys, the Jurassic World toys, it's something you may want to consider, be careful of. You don't actually get your tiny little thumbs, your tiny, tiny little thumbs stuck in the tail section of Indoraptor. The last thing we'll do is visit an old friend. Oh dear Jurassic World app, I've missed you so. Now it advertises the Dino Rivals, which is a new Jurassic World toy line that has just started releasing in stores. Haven't seen many here in Canada yet, but we'll just skip through that nonetheless. We're gonna go ahead to scan. And what I need to do is scan the QR code, the little dinosaur code. It's just a matter of lining it up like that. 
and it's going to immediately unlock our dinosaur. If I can get the Indoraptor to stay stay tight there, stay there there for a fella, stay there for a second, fella. I'm going to bring the volume up a little bit. There is the Indoraptor. Now we've already really technically looked at the Indoraptor before. It doesn't look like they've changed any bit of the animations. It looks like it's exactly the same. There is this little button right here, which we can then switch to, and it has new dino apps, new enabled information that we can have a look at. So we touch the top one, the Indoraptor uses an echolocation like bats, or echo, I guess echolocation like sonar. In the film, the Indoraptor is a carnivore and eats lots of meat. You think so? Up here in the film, the Indoraptor is 24 feet long, longer than an elephant. In the film, Indoraptor is referred to as a stealth fighter jet of dinosaurs. And lastly, in the film, the Indoraptor is extremely aggressive and violent. That seems like sort of an understatement, stating the obvious, if you will. By the way, if you also just want to see kind of where we've left off, the, uh, the dino rivals now sort of are taking over, unfortunately. But if you scroll a little bit further down, all the stuff that we've looked at is still there. I like that they've added on to it by including the new dinosaur layout, but it hasn't affected all the previous collection of dinosaurs that we already accumulated over the series of reviews of dinosaur toys here of Jurassic World. The Grab and Growl Indoraptor brings a little bit something extra to the table, otherwise it would be identical to the one that we had a look at. It has all the same functionality. Well, at least it has the same similar posability. Where the difference, though, is, is that the one that we had looked at before, the more posable one, even though it had the same articulation, you could manually do what you want with the dinosaur. You can move its head, you can move its jaw, you can move its torso, and you can move its arms. Here you can do sort of the same thing, but you know when you are moving it that it sits a little loose, it flops around a little bit more. All that because the controlled gimmick in the tail. The tail does basically everything on this dinosaur, short of you adjusting the knees and the elbows and the arms and the legs. Cosmetically, I suppose they are identical to one another, even though this one does have the omitted coloring in the eyes. It's sort of the unfortunate trade-off by having it have light-up effects, at least in the eyes. Cosmetically, even though they do look the same and sort of function the same way, I like that at the very least that when you put them side by side, you notice that the Grab and Growl Indoraptor is bigger. It's not simply a case of one has electronics and one doesn't. So at least there's something there that it would justify picking this one up. I like the lights and I like the slashing actions that have been incorporated into this tail. Sort of the stuff that we are now starting to see with the new Jurassic World toy lines that's hitting the store shelves right now. Which I might also mention, nowhere found in Canada, at least that I can find so far. Definitely would be interested in picking up some of the new Jurassic World toys. And I'm happy to see that they still work on the app. About nothing that I would really have changed to this particular Indoraptor. Again, I like the fact it's a little bit bigger. I guess the one problem is, other than the fact that it's lifeless in the eyes until you use the tail, is the problem with the little button that's on the tail. It does pinch a thumb, and you have to be careful when you are pulling that button back that when you are releasing it, you may get a little bit of skin getting caught when that button goes back into the desired place where it's supposed to be. Other than that, I have no idea how Bill was even able to find this. I don't even think there's many reviews on YouTube, and I know certainly going into toy, short, uh, toy stores myself, I could only really only find the other Indoraptor, the one that we looked at. So I don't know how he managed to find this one, but thank you very much, Bill, for taking the time and sending it my way. Today we were having a look a little bit late, but we were having a look at the Jurassic World Grab and Growl Indoraptor. You guys want to go back and have a look at some more dino videos? I like dino videos. If you like dino videos too, there's a whole playlist just for Jurassic World toys. Check that out and watch those at your viewing pleasure. And make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.